Welcome to another episode of Winging It with the Winds. <laughs> we have like no wind. <laughs> this is not gonna work. We're gonna sail. Believe it or not, we are actually sailing right now at a whopping two and a half knots, but we are sailing in Phuket, Thailand of all places, a brand new country for us. And we are on our very first charter ever because, well, we like to do things a little fast backwards as my grandmother would say. Because we've been sailing around the world for the last seven years, but we were complete newbies when we started. As in, we bought the boat and then learned how to sail it. And now when people ask us for advice on how to get started in sailing, we're like, well, join a local sailing club or go take a sailing course or charter a boat. Most of which we have done none of ourselves other than take the sailing courses. But again, we did that after we bought the boat. Now we sold that boat last year because we're building a new hybrid electric catamaran. It's not quite ready yet. And in an attempt to not completely lose our sea legs and our sailing skills, we are chartering our first boat at a glacial pace, <laughs> which is perfect. Plus it's our anniversary. Yes, it's our 17th wedding anniversary. So this is kind of our celebration. celebration. We are almost there. We had to put away the sail because there's, well, no wind. We sailed for a little bit. That's better than nothing. But actually, it's a good thing because as we're getting closer to our anchorage, there's just a minefield of markers and they are just floating pieces of whatever with either lines attached to them for fishing or maybe they're like marking crab pots. But anyway, there's markers everywhere. So I guess it's okay that we're not blasting through here with uh, the sails up at 10 knots of speed. Not that I think we're going to get that in this boat, but. You know what I'm saying. We've only been out here for like, what, an hour? Yeah. Or something. It's not very far to our first destination here. And I'm already like a kid in a candy shop. It just is gorgeous every direction you look. And I'm thinking a week is just not gonna cut it. That's all we got. Oh man. I mean, it amps me up like I'm super pumped to come back. Yeah. I haven't even seen or explored anything yet. I'm already, I can't wait to come back. <laughs> okay, tell me when. You good to drop? I have no idea how much chain is out. <laughs> I don't see a chain counter up here. No. This is the fun part about, uh, you know, a charter boat. Just figure it out. All right, as soon as we get settled, I will give you the full scoop on this boat. I haven't used a regular chain hook in, well, since we bought the boat and got rid of our regular chain hook <laughs> seven years ago. Yeah. So then I think this is a fishing line for the bridle because it can fall and then it becomes a real pain. Idle reverse. Seems to be holding. Looks good. Okay. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Back. Because this is our very first charter, I didn't really know what to expect from this whole experience, but it has been so much easier than I ever anticipated. Starting off, they pick you up at the airport and the driver, it's an hour drive, but he stops at the halfway point where there is a really nice mall slash grocery store. Dropped us off there. We got to do all of our provisioning which of course they have like the service where you can check all the boxes and just order your food and then it'll all magically be on the boat whenever you get here. But it's a whole new country for us. And uh, like shopping is such like, half the fun, right? Like getting to see all the foods and everything at the grocery store. And I'm so glad that we did that because it was an experience in itself. It's so much better than plastic. So we did all of our shopping, picked up a local SIM card, then we get to the marina. He's like, oh, no, no, no. You just leave all your stuff right here. Just head on into the office. We'll take care of all of this. They took all of our bags, all of our groceries, put it all on the boat. You didn't have to do anything. We get to the office. They're like, hi, welcome. Let's show you your vessel. 
bring us down and give us a quick tour rundown of everything on the boat. And then it doesn't end there. So first of all, I should say this is not sponsored. We've never done it before. I know a lot of people have never done a charter before and we get the question all the time. Should we charter? Is it so freaking expensive? Should we pay the money to charter? Yeah, so we're just sharing our experience here. Once we got on the boat, we sat down with the base manager. He pulled out the charts, this guidebook, and showed us basically our entire route. He said, okay, here, you wanna stop here. If you wanna go to a restaurant, go here. If you don't wanna go to a restaurant, you wanna snorkel, you go here. So basically he did all of the planning for us. And that part, I can't tell you how long it normally takes us when we arrive in a new country, in a new anchorage, in a new area, how much research goes into figuring everything out. You're gonna want to go from number one, where we are now, okay? It's about seven nautical miles up to 31 okay. in Copenhagen East. This is where that cave is that I told you guys about. So our only job is to have fun, watch the tides, and watch the weather because it is monsoon season and storms do sort of brew up. But he's like, oh, on a clear day, you can see them from a mile away. You know when to brace yourself. So don't, don't worry about it. The sun's about to go down. We should give you a quick tour before we mess it up, before we get cameras and computers everywhere <laughs> and food and, and mess up the beds because they're all nice and neat. Everything's neat, so check it out. We're gonna start with the inside because the moment that sun goes down, this is gonna get dark, but outside will still look good. So this is a Sunsail 404, AKA a Leopard 40. Apparently there are maybe some differences, I'm sure in how they ordered them, but I don't know what those are. So I'm not gonna pretend to give you any information on that. But this is our galley and it is fully stocked as far as just like everything you need for like cooking. There's even like pitchers and everything else. They're all of our cooking utensils, plenty of towels, dishwasher. I, but really, as far as that goes, you just need to provide the food, cooking oil, seasonings, that kind of thing. But otherwise everything is here. Cause I've been digging around these cabinets and it's good. I'm quite stoked about that. And then we've got our navigation, chart table, whatever you wanna call that nice big salon area with a big table a bar it's only a week i mean how much alcohol you want to bring it's just one bottle of rum that'll be more than we need we've got a freezer and a refrigerator all of our electronics ah interesting so it actually has underwater lights did not expect that and a water maker also did not think that they would give you a charter boat with a water maker, but dang, nice. Stereo system, radio, and then of course, all your basic navigation gear. I, although there's probably, there's no radar. Not that you would necessarily need that around here. I mean, we're just coastal sailing. It is a charter, but. Uh, yeah, there's no night sailing on a charter. Yeah, also, yeah, no night sailing. So this is a four cabin vessel, meaning we have two identical forward berths two identical aft berths and two identical heads. They do have owner's vessels as well. Also did not know that was, a, I was a lot, I don't know about this whole chartering market, right? But it is, this one is a four cabin, kind of your standard charter vessel, which means you can really pack a lot of people in these boats. So if you take the cost of this thing and divide that amongst, you know, six people or eight, if you're really, want to pack them in here, then it, the price really drops down and this becomes a really affordable vacation in my personal opinion for my budget. And then moving back, we've got nice big cockpit table. We've got a dinghy, the 9.8 horsepower engine on it. They have an extra cooler that they put ice in there for you. I didn't expect that either. Anything else I need to point out in here? Or should we move to the deck? Let's move to the deck. Okay. Yeah. Of course we have flush hatches and we have these shades to help keep the heat off because holy crap, the sun is so hot here. It's anyway. not even the hot season. It's not, I know, holy cow. So there's all sorts of toys you can add on and we've got paddle boards and bean bags. And as far as the sailing equipment on this boat, it's only a 40 foot boat. So the sails are pretty small. We've got a Genoa and a mainsail. That's it. It's rigged for a spinnaker, but he's like, I've got spinnakers, but we don't give out spinnakers on charter. And I was like, oh, come on, man. We've done a spinnaker many times. He's like, eh, sorry. <laughs> I, I can't say that I blame them. No, me either. I mean, we probably could have sailed the whole way. No, we were upwind. Okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing 
else really up here to show you other than the helm which you'll see over and over while we're sailing here tiny tiny trampolines up front i mean it's just it's not a very big area but the best part is we have like a mini forward cockpit we've got some protection here we've got the big open door so the breeze is quite nice even though we only have four nights of four nights four knots of wind coming through there's still a nice little breeze inside so which means which means what? The more breeze you have, the less AC you're running. Oh, yeah. The, oh, it does have AC. So it does have a generator, and it has two ACs. And they were cranking them when we got here, and it was nice and cool in here. So that is the question. Everybody that I know that goes on charter says they start the generator, they never turn it off, and they crank the ACs the whole time because that's luxury living. I can't do it. No. If it gets really hot, we'll probably crank on the, the ACs like during the middle of the day if we're working. But other than that, we're going to be playing. That's why we're here. That's right. And it's nice right now. Yeah. It's a beautiful sure. temperature. So that's our boat for the next week, at least. The local raspberry beer. It can be really good. Or terrible. Or really bad. It's a local. Gotta try it. It is like neon. Is mine even bigger than yours? Sure. Never say that to a man. <laughs> it's like a shandy. There you go. Not terrible. <laughs> Quite enjoyable. Refreshing. Oh. Enhanced by the view and the natural sounds of the water. Feels good to be back out here. Yeah, it does. Feels like home. <laughs> Jeez. Full moon tonight. Not the most stable board. Should have gone for the kayaks. <laughs> Dang, I just turned on my knees. Yeah. Okay. I can see the board flexing. Yeah. Maybe it needs a little more air. It's okay. It'll get us where we need to go. That's right. It's an adventure. Cast away. Wilson! Oh! <laughs> Dope. <laughs> Fine then. Uh, no pictures, please. No yeah. pictures. Dark hole first. <laughs> She'll be right. Front of water. Front of water, not a flashlight. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll let you know if I hit anything. I'm sure I'll hear it. Yeah. A thud. We did not bring our spelunking gear, so this is a uh, a no-go adventure for us. It's a little too dark in there. We did not come very well prepared <laughs> <laughs> for this last minute adventure. Anyway, moving on. We are going to paddle into this cave to try to get into the center little area with the water that we can see from the drone but i don't think i'm going to be able to film it because i think it's going to be all hands-on technically low tide would be best so we're a little a uh, little early because mm -hmm. it's coming down from high but i think we'll be fine what's that thank you thank you Pretty dark. Uh, it's pitch black straight ahead. <laughs> we made it. We used the action cam as a light flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hello. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was definitely super creepy in the beginning. And then uh, we turned on the camera for the light and it was like the tiniest little glow, but just enough that we could make it through. So that was exciting. I think had we not had the camera for like the glow, yeah, I might have, but I don't know. Then you're halfway in there, you're, you can't funk out anymore. Like that's it. There's no way to turn around. Like, there's no going back. It was this, this skinny and this skinny. It was, it was, Exciting. That's why all the people are laying down in their tour. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, there's the whole thing all back there and everything. Yeah. Okay. Let's go explore. Now they're just walking in. Nice. Oh, good. <laughs> we timed that one well. Yeah. It's not working either, so. Yeah. Currently we got zero knots. <laughs> we got something though. Something out there. I can see the little thingy spinning. Well, not much wind up there. All right, so here's the deal. We just left our anchorage and we had the choice of two different directions. If we go north, we get like Jurassic Park, all those really cool, jaggedy, awesome looking land masses just jutting out of the sea. But the big but is the water's really silty. The further north you go, the more close you are to land at the top of the inlet where all the rivers drain into, so therefore the water's not quite as clear. If we go south, the land is not quite as exciting as the Jurassic Park happening up here north, but the water is a lot more clear. After a long debate, our number one thing we want to do is snorkel and swim. So we're going south. We're gonna find some fish. We're gonna find some clear water. We're gonna jump in. But not tonight because we have to get somewhere to spend the night so then we can get somewhere else to actually get the clear water. But anyway, that's the plan. And that's where we're going. Hey, and we're still sailing. Se selling, sailing, sailing. Motor sailing. <laughs> just one day of being out here. It's such a huge realization for me that this is indeed my happy place. Not that I didn't know it before, but this whole past year of living out of a suitcase and all the different places we've stayed, we've done some really incredible things. We've had some really wonderful times, but it's just not the same as being out here 
on the water. Like this is, even all my favorite moments from this past year are usually old ones where I was on some sort of vessel. So I just, I think I'm a lifer. I just don't think I know how to live any other way anymore other than being out here. That's it. I'm addicted. What a beautiful morning, holy cow. Sun goes up at about 5.30, so it's about 6.20 right now. And it is just lovely. So quiet, so beautiful. The birds are singing, the boats are moving way off in the background, the fishermen. The light is just perfect. Okay. Time for some vitamins. Oh, maybe some coffee. Then some exercise. Then some swimming. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a good day. I'm sitting here this morning drinking my coffee, thinking about this whole experience. And I can honestly say, this is the best way to dip your feet into the lifestyle without buying a boat. And for us, this is a bare boat charter and you need certain certifications and since we're american that's asa you can find a list of all of their classes and locations online or you can join a company like vagabond adventures where it's more of a live aboard experience and you get to get your classes sail on a performance boat and learn from well somebody experience which you would on any asa class but the performance boat thing is pretty cool and if you don't have your own certification and you just don't feel like getting it because it's going to be your first charter, you can have a captain. It's just a little bit more expensive and you've got somebody else taking up one of your berths. So you can't split the cost between as many people. You can charter a lot of the production boats like Fontaine Bajot, Leopard, Lagoon, even Neil. So if you're considering one of those boats, heck yes, get a charter because you will learn so much about the boat about what's gonna break first, about the galley. Maybe you thought a 40 was big enough and you realize, oh man, I need a 45. So there's just a wealth of knowledge you can learn even in one week, even if you don't have wind and you can barely put the sails up, you will still learn so much about that boat. If you wanna push your experience even further, you can join companies like 59 North or Outer Passage. They do real ocean going passage making. And man, I can tell you that we've heard so many stories about couples that buy a boat. One of them decides they love passage making, the other one decides they hate it. And then it's like, boom, boom, they either figure it out or they sell the boat and the dream is done. Passage making is not for everybody. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it, but uh, there's no better way to find out if it is for you than to go on a passage on somebody else's boat. So let's talk price. Charting a boat isn't cheap, but there are ways to make it more affordable. So right now in Thailand, it's off season. So when you compare the prices of chartering a boat here in Thailand versus say the BVIs, it's half the price. And then the base manager, when we picked up our boat, he said, we also offer walk-in discounts. So if you happen to be near a base, you're visiting a country that has a base and you just pop in or give them a call, you can probably book a last minute charter at a discounted price and you'll get it for a steal. So that was really an interesting tip that he gave us. And then the other thing is there's different tiers of charters. So the older the boat, the cheaper it gets. And if you go searching online, you can find boats that are five years old, 10 years old. I don't remember what the threshold is, but it does get substantially cheaper. And then the last thing I wanna tell you is don't discount lake sailing. We met a guy in Charlevoix, Michigan who was chartering his older monoholes for like a thousand dollars a week. You can't get into a sailboat and have a week vacation for any cheaper. You'll get to run the lines, you'll get to anchor, you'll get to sleep and cook and everything. So there is a way to get in without spending 10 or 20 grand on a bare boat charter. We still stand by our recommendation. If you're considering buying a boat, if you're new to sailing, definitely charter and definitely take your classes before you buy. Jump switch.
and we're up. It's important to switch jobs. So otherwise you get all comfortable and you forget what the other job is like. And then you start yelling at each other. Why aren't you taking, turning the boat this way? And why aren't you pulling up the anchor fast enough? You just, you know, it's good. I hesitate to even mention this because it feels like jinxing ourselves, but <laughs> it's probably not the best week to charter a sailboat. We have absolutely no wind headed our way as of right now. It looks dead calm. So, I mean, it is absolutely stunning and it is beautiful, but I think the whole idea of exercising our sailing skills is <laughs> kind of not maybe going to happen this trip, but at least we're anchoring and we're paying attention to wind and tides and, you know, kind of just planning and the whole act of all the rest of it at least. And most importantly, like the lifestyle of just being back out here on the water. I just, I am probably have repeated this already so many times. Jason probably cut it out. <laughs> I am just so happy to be back out on the water. It just feels so good. I knew I missed it, but I didn't realize how badly until we got out here. Ugh. New boat can't come soon. What's the ETA, Cap? Uh, ETA, 25 minutes. Okay, that's where we're going. Is that my cue to put my bathing suit on? Yes. Okay. What do you think? It's close. Close? Maybe not too close. We're gonna hang out here for a minute. Just on this morning ball and it'll be fun. Okay. Wanna give it a tug? Okay, here we go. Holding. Nicely done. I just did idle reverse because it's just a day use mooring. So it's just enough to know that it will actually hold us, but we're going to be right here. So I'm not that worried about, we'll dive on it. It'll be fine. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to be a fish. Visibility is a little cloudy. Maybe it'll clear up. High tides in half an hour. I don't know if we just missed the incoming tide or what, but the water was super cloudy, not a lot of visibility. So went for a bit of a swim, checked out these islands, but we're gonna go ahead and move along to the next spot. What is that next spot? Kokam, <laughs> Kodam, Kodam Kuan. <laughs> One of those, we're not quite sure yet. There's two islands with like a sand spit in between. That's where we're heading and it's right there. Yeah, we're still working on that whole like Thai pronunciation thing probably going to butcher a lot. All right, we're free. Ah, I forgot. It's also known as Chicken Island and it's a uh, pretty obvious why. I made you a matcha latte. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. <laughs>
long tail boats are insane. We've been watching them come and go all around us, especially since we got over here. It's been very intense because they all kind of take off from the main set of land over there and they do like these day trips where they take you around to like four or five little hot spots right around here and so it is uh, it's a whole nother world. Yeah. yeah. We came over here because it's like a super popular tourist destination and for, for two reasons. The actual piece of beach that's just over there and these long tail boats. They are like nothing I've ever seen. They're colorful, they're bright, some are obnoxiously loud. Others are not, and they've got these big motors. What you would see in a truck, just an engine plucked out of a truck. Yeah, not put, a marine engine. No, right on this long shaft so they can control it like, with their feet while they're sort of motoring around and they keep it just out of the water because like, all this water right here is maybe this deep. So they're able to maneuver these things, these big boats in really shallow water because of those long tails, I guess. That's where it got its name. Maybe. <laughs> we'll have to fact check that. <laughs> they are pretty wild though. Yeah. So this is the sand spit or the sand bridge at high tide. This is all completely covered. So it's not exposed and you can't walk from one island to the next. So this is what everybody shows up for. Low tide to walk from one island to another. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. There's like water fountains shooting up. There's crabs or clams or something. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Come on, give me a big one. Hey! So this right here is one of the big benefits, one of many, to having a boat, which is getting to choose how you want your experiences because I think right now we're the only people left. And earlier there must have been well over a hundred people just kind of in and around this whole area, maybe more. You know, it's going to be sunset and we're going to get to have this place all to ourselves. But if you're kind of in a socializing mood and you want to come over and hang out while it's happening, you can do that too. But it's just, you get to choose when and where you want to have your adventures and you're not on anybody's schedule but your own. And I just love that freedom so much. Like, of course there's advantages to taking those long tails and it's a whole different adventure, but I just, it's a lot to love about this. Anyway, I think that we are going to do exactly that. Enjoy the sunset. And I will say thank you so much for watching and we will see you again next week. <laughs>